morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Ladder Talk Live. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Ladder Talk Live, a daily podcast for leaders, thinkers, future makers, covering topics like personal branding, self-awareness, networking, fear, and career management. I am your host. I am Coach Melina. I'm on a mission to help everyday people live extraordinary lives. So super excited to have you here with me today. We are in a exciting week. We are currently in the secret to successful leadership week. Each and every day, we are here Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Each week, we have a new topic that we uncover. Um, so this week is more so uh, being a successful leader. Yesterday, um, we had some technical difficulties. So if you missed it, I do apologize. But we will recap yesterday's episode today. Uh, but before we get started, feel free to introduce yourself. If this is your first time watching, feel free to pop in the chat, introduce yourself. Where are you joining us from? This is an interactive show. So we want to make sure that your voice is heard that you have um, access to the conversation and that we can learn from each other. So yesterday we talked about empowering yourself as a leader, but embracing who you are, embracing your leadership style. I encourage each and every one of you, if you have not already, to take the quiz. What is your leadership style? I will pop it in the chat for you guys. At the end of this, you can um, go ahead and participate in the workshop, um, excuse me, not workshop, but you can participate in the quiz identifying specifically what is your leadership style so that you can really utilize these tools that we go over this week to identify how you um, kick it off within your ideal audience and the people that you're working with. So what I'd like to cover uh, very briefly before we go forward with today's topic, uh, I want to kind of recap yesterday uh, in terms of embracing your audience, embracing your leadership style. So there are four types of leaders. Uh, there are several others, but the top four is kind of what we covered. We have servant leadership, which is a person who takes care of your people. They take care of the job. The servant leaders believe in people first. Um, although they may be the boss, they work for their employees. Um, employees typically like servant leaders because their ability to fulfill employers' needs. That is the servant leadership. Uh, number two, transactional leadership. In this style of leadership, um, it's defined of control, organization, and short-term planning. So leaders who adapt this style rely on a system of rewards and punishment to motivate their followers. There are also a few key assumptions associated with transactional leadership, which is rewards and punishments are motivating followers. Um, but again, it's kind of a, a two-way street from that avenue. Our third is visionary leadership. So you tend to see the big picture. Normally, don't worry as much about the small details. These leaders shift people and process in a way that to get them closer to their vision. Um, they typically are charismatic, are determined to strive for their goals, things like that. And lastly, we have the pace setter leadership. So very high goals and standards to get things done better and faster. Um, are set uh, kind of by that leader. The leader is a very high performer and also inspect, expects the same from their followers, uh, from the people that are, are uh, contributing to the team. Um, so these are our uh, top four. I encourage you to take a peek in the quiz to identify at the end of this, what is your style? right? I, I want to make sure that we're all able to get something out of this. So feel free to make sure you're tapping into the link that I attached so that you can find out your leadership style. Now, if you see me pivot from screen to screen, I am live on multiple platforms. So I have Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and Entra. So if you see me pivot from screen to screen, that is why. Uh, once again, feel free to chime in in this conversation, share it, live so that other people can engage. If you're watching this right now, hit the share button. Make sure other people are aware this is happening because uh, it could very well be your leader. And maybe they need tips and tools to be better leaders. We've all been led by unbecoming um, leaders and we've all probably been led by great leaders. We can all learn from the conversation and how to engage with one another from a human perspective, from my choice. So today we are talking about how leadership builds long-term success. Now, this, this is 
a very important thing to measure and, and to remind ourselves, right? When we are building something, when, when we are leading something that matters, it, it's important to identify where you come in. Hello, uh, Matthew, thanks for joining. Um, it's important to know why we're doing what we're doing. What's the point of all of this? What, what's, what, what are we looking to achieve out of all of this? Why leadership is important is kind of what we're going to talk about. Number one, leadership builds trust. Now, I know that that can kind of be pretty obvious, right? But uh, again, for those of you who are like me, who have sometimes not had the best leadership, sometimes you don't trust your leader. You feel like at any waking moment, they may um, throw you under the bus. You know, a good leader takes takes the hit if, if there's failure within the team as a whole, not just singling out one person. Building that trust as a leader is, is imperative to your team's success. Because imagine, it's similar to parenting in a way. Um, when your child trust you, they're more likely to be honest with you and tell you, I made this mistake or I did this because you created a space where it's safe to make mistakes. They're not, if they don't feel the need to have to hide things from you or sugarcoat things. They're, they're upfront and honest with you because you built that level of trust. An effective leader should have that same rapport. Obviously, they're not your parents, you're not their child, and I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is building that rapport with your team, you want to you want them to come to you when trouble comes up, or you want them to come to you when there's there's wins. So it's important that you're building that level of trust so that they know that it's okay to make mistakes. We talked about this a few weeks ago. It's okay to make mistakes. That's how you learn, that's how you become a better individual, whether you're a leader or not. So ensuring from a leadership perspective that you understand trust is the foundation. Communication with one another is a foundation of success in a business, in your team, and all over the place, right? In your personal life as well. Leadership is what's creating the vision. Now, I want you to think about this from the larger scale, right? If we think of Elon Musk, right? He, he, he created um, something that had you know, not been created on a large scale when you're talking about electric vehicles. He had a vision as a leader and then employed the people that could help that dream come to life. Now, we can we can all agree and, and chime in if you're watching this live or if you're catching the replay, feel free to do that as well. I want you to chime in on the chat. How many of you think that Elon Musk could have distributed all of these vehicles, created all of these new prototypes and all of these new things, SpaceX and all of that by himself. Let me know, do you think that would have been possible with one person? Let's see, do you guys think that that's possible? Chime in in the chat. Exactly, Mohammed. he was a, or is I should say, a pace setter. Now, he couldn't have done it alone but he was a leader with a vision and his vision had to be brought to light with the support of a team. Now it's important to employ your team, allow your team to somewhat, I mean, you can't tell them everything possibly if it's top secret or whatever, but they need to also know what is the goal? Where are they, where are we all trying to go here? So they know where they need to be putting their energy. Sometimes what happens, and I'm, I'm not sure if you guys have experienced this yourself, but you, you're a part of a team, but you don't really know what the mission is, right? They're, they're just giving you little increments of things to do, but you don't know why you're even doing it. Now, this could probably be sustained somewhat for a, a minimal amount of time, but for the long term, eventually, in order for it to be successful, people need to know what they're working towards. Because if we think Elon Musk came up with the first iteration of the Tesla and all by himself told a group of people to put it together that it just went went through without any problems. The case, right? We know that he hired a team of people, experts in their field as consultants, if you will, to tell him, how can we make this better? It's important to tell your team what the goal is so that they may be able to provide ideas and, and strategies to help you get there as a team more effectively. 
If you continue to keep it to yourself and you give them incremental assignments, they're going to do as you're told, as they're told, but could you've gotten there any faster? Could they have given you a better strategy and idea to get there? Likely to be 100% of the time, yes. So ensure that as you're building that trust within your team, you're giving them the vision. If they know where they're going, they're motivated on their journey towards that finish line. They know what success looks like. They want to be a part of that win, right? When, when I hire candidates, I tell them the vision for the company, where we look to be in the next five, 10 years. They get excited because they get to be a part of that level of change and, and embrace and, and add something to it. They have new ideas. They bring perspective. As a leader, you need to be willing and, and welcoming to perspective. We can't all individually know every single thing. It's not how we were designed. There's always going to be someone else out there that knows just a little bit more than us. And there's always going to be someone out there that can learn from us. So it's important that you embrace both sides of the coin, if you will, and recognize that we can all get there together. But you can't do it if you don't share the vision. So important to create a vision and share it with your team. Leadership focuses on the future. As I just mentioned, what is the long goal? What is the long-term plan? Even if you don't quite know what that looks like, okay, well, what's the next six-month plan? When you guys go through your interviews, these are questions you're going to want to ask because you want to know, am I, is, does this align with what I want to do? Do I buy into that vision? As a leader, you need to make sure your team is bought into your vision for whatever that project may be, whatever that company goal may be, you need to identify that the people that you're bringing on are the people that are bought in. And if they're not bought in, it's best to know early versus waiting, and then you've got the wrong team in place, right? Number four, leadership is responsible for results. Now, as we know, the importance of creating a, a, a goal creating the vision, creating that level of trust. We also need to ensure that we're creating milestones so that we can en en embrace and celebrate those mini wins. Your team is only going to be as motivated as you are, but right? And, and as you go through, you take the quiz that I told you all to go ahead and make sure you're taking this week. You also want to make sure that you are embracing the journey how many times do you hear these motivational speeches and people talking, you hear Tony Robbins and all these, these folks talking about you know, embrace the journey, embrace the journey, embrace the journey. That's not just for you. That is for everyone you're connected to. And as a leader, it's your responsibility, in my opinion, to ensure that you're happy helping your team embrace that. OK, so ensure that as you're going through this process, your team is celebrating being just as much as you will be celebrated as the leader, okay? Leadership is a team sport. So don't just put your hat on and, and stand on top of the, the you know, the, the stairs or, you know, the pulpit, whatever it may be at the, at the top of it, and, and expect that you're just pointing out things and delegating to people. It's a team effort. Leadership builds teams. That's why it's so important, in my opinion, to build that level of trust, that's what's going to sustain. These are your peers, not your subordinates. A strong leader is built on a foundation of camaraderie and the ability to work together, creating a unit. Ensure that you're building something with your team that they also can be proud of, that they also feel connected to, that they also feel like they want to build along with you. OK, um, make sure that you're promoting the right people. A leader develops and hires the right people. Now, if you've been following along with me in this Ladder Talk Live that we do every day, you understand the importance on both sides of the coin to interview and be interviewed the right way. What to look for, what questions to ask, what questions they should be asking you. You want to make sure it's a it's a an even fit. Now, be very cautious because some people think a fit means that they need to be like them. 
That is not what I'm saying. That is not the case because differences stretch our muscle. Differences make us better, right? Ensuring that you're collaborating and employing people that don't look like you, that don't come from the same walks of life as you, that come from different companies than you. No one wants to build a machine of people. Everybody's saying the same thing. You're never going to be innovative that way. That's why it's so important to hire people that come from all different backgrounds, all different walks of life, all different categories. Everyone has their own specialty. Everyone has an expertise. But together, you're building something magical. You're building something spectacular. You're building a team that sustains. Ensure as you're hiring people and as you're deciding to move people forward in process that it's you're not hiring for comfort. Comfort doesn't build billion dollar businesses. If you look at um, the, the top companies in the, in, in the world, it's not based on hiring all the same people. That's not what has happened. They're bringing people from different specialties to build something magical, as I said, extravagant, something that can last decades, something that can build trillions of dollars. They didn't do it by hiring the same person over and over and over again. It's your job as the leader, however, to identify when that is happening and making a change, making the shift, saying yes to the unconventional hire, because that's what's going to help your team grow. That's what's going to stretch your team. That's what's going to teach your team members how to be their best versions of themselves, how to elevate themselves and level up in their own careers. That's what we want as employees, as managers, as, as leaders. That's what's necessary and that's what is wanted, even if they don't say that. No one wants to be sitting in the same room every, every day for 10 years doing the same thing. Is that what you want to do? It isn't what I want to do. I want to be challenged. I want to learn. I want to learn from my peers. Ensure that you're creating a space where your team, where your team has the ability to learn from each other. And the only way to do that is to provide a unique, unique perspectives that are brought to the table. That's the only way this will work. Unique perspectives that are brought to the table, that's where people thrive. That's where people learn. Not from doing the same thing, not by you know, hiring all the same people. Because if you do that, and you might as well put everybody on a hamster wheel. I'm just being honest. We've seen what that looks like, hiring all the same people. You see what that looks like. It's cool, it's fun for a while, but eventually you're like, dang, I'm not learning anything from this. We're not going anywhere with this. So skip the whole step of realizing, take my advice and hire people that stretch your team. Think of that from that perspective. Create team-oriented culture and environments. That's where we, we started with, with building levels of trust. Make it a safe place to work. Now, I know people may think, may look at me and say, well, what, what do you mean? Nobody's over here getting, you know, not, nothing bad is happening. That's not what I mean. There, there are nonverbal things that go on in the workplace that shouldn't be happening. But people are afraid to speak because it's not a safe place. Build a safe place. It's your individual job each and every person, whether you're a leader or not, but it starts from the top. It's your job to build something where people can voice their opinions safely, can be themselves in a safe place and to set up processes and policies and things like that to, to give that safe place. Because when you have that, that is when your company becomes top place to work. That is when your company is, people are banging down the door trying to work for you. Employee engagement, Boy, oh boy, employee engagement is everything. Everything. If you don't have employees working for your company, you've got nothing. You may have the best idea in the world, but if nobody wants to work there, you're never going to be able to accomplish it. You need people. So ensure that you're creating a safe place for people to want to work with you and collaborate and bring you their ideas. 
that's what's going to bring the company to that next level. That's what's going to transition your company from a million dollar business to a billion dollar business and a trillion dollar business. Collaboration, connecting, unity. These are things that you want to ensure that your one team, whether if it's a team of a thousand or a team of three, it is still your job to ensure that that is what you're fostering. Does this make sense? Let me know in the chat. I know I go off on a little rant sometimes, um, but let me know if this is helpful to any of you. Um, last, enable employees to succeed. As a leader, it is your job to lift up your team. It is your job to ensure that you're, you're creating a space where your team can thrive. Now, as I mentioned before, that's where the level of success celebrations come in. Celebrate your team. Celebrate, celebrate, allow them to celebrate each other. Because without that, you've got nothing. Eventually, your team will feel burnt out. They know your long-term goal, but they're not celebrating the many wins. And now they're tired. Now they're checked out. And now they're looking for other employment. If you want to retain top talent, you need to give them something to stay for. It starts with leaders. It starts with people. It starts and ends with people. Ensure that you're fostering an environment that people want to remain in, that people want to follow your, follow your lead and, and allow each other to succeed in the long run and the short run. Okay, so once again, we are here Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern. Tomorrow, we are going to be talking about leadership for a collaborative and inclusive future. We're going to be diving deep into that uh, tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, just some quick announcements. We are kicked off in Talent Acquisition Week. Yesterday, I spoke live um, on employee engagement. Uh, the rest of this week is going to be jam-packed of information. If you're in the talent acquisition space, you need to get your ticket. You need to get there. You want to catch these replays as well. TalentAcquisitionWeek.com. You can sign up to attend. Um, look at my page for a discount code to participate. And then also we are knee deep. We're approaching week two in our 30 day program. If you are in the market, still struggling to find employment, still struggling to, you know, tell your story, struggling to identify what am I supposed to be doing next? You need to be in this room. You need to be here. It, it's, it's time is up. We're seven months into the year. You're two years into the job that you, aren't, you don't enjoy waking up for every day. Time's up, time's up. You need to join me. You need to be in this program to fix it. All you need is 30 days. All you need is 30 days. You've already been doing it for seven months, if not longer. If 30 days could fix it, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you spend 30 days to increase your salary, double your income possibly? or even increase it by 20, 30%, 40% or more. That's a yes for me. But only you know how much you're you're willing to continue to struggle through it and, and, and fake smile yourself through this. And you're not doing yourself any favors and you're not doing your team any favors. So if you're ready to take action, let me know. But in the meantime, take the quiz. I want to know what type of leader you are. Tomorrow when we tap in live, start popping in the chats. What type of leader are you? I am a what? What does that mean to you? How will you now utilize that information from the quiz to help you identify how to be a better leader? Let me know. I look forward to seeing you guys' results. I will see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day. Remember, you have a choice to be the best leader that you can be. See you tomorrow.